Arming. I recently shot a video about whether or not AIOs were the future. It got a lot of attention because I think they really could be the future, but my test certainly wasn't perfect. I held the drone at full throttle, flew around, pulsed the throttle, tried a lot of things to make it blow up, and it survived, which made a lot of people excited, but it brought some haters too. One thing that is notorious for killing ESCs of any kind is providing resistance to whatever it wants to do. When flying a drone, typically that's doing turtle mode or hitting a gate, hitting a tree, something along those lines, that can blow up ESCs. And we need a way to simulate that to the most extreme amount. We're gonna run the drone up to full throttle and stop the prop with a dowel going from full throttle to nothing while keeping it at full throttle in an instant, which should send a ton of voltage back into the FETs, most likely causing it to blow up. If it can survive that though, AIOs could be the future and this will have a little bit more positive attention towards it. But it is expected to fail. That is very important to remember. I do not think it's gonna be able to survive this. And if it does, we will all be blown away. Let's get over and look at the testing situation. This is the test stand that Skip made for this, essentially allowing us to go full throttle on the drone and sticking a wooden dowel like we've got right here into the prop, causing it from going really fast to stopping really fast. It's gonna be really loud, so I think the plan is to stand behind one of these trucks. Skip here is in his full safety gear. Skip, what do you think's gonna happen? Uh, I think it's either gonna blow up or survive, either one. <laughs> <laughs> That's not it's definitive 50, 50 at all. Chance. Okay. Radio on. Radio's on. Wait, not yet, not yet. Hold up. Don't. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Batteries in there. Fully charged success. And this is our testing situation. We're going to do another test arm really quick. Here we go. Watch out, Skip. Okay. Before you arm it, I want to say something. What do you want to say? Do not do this at all. <laughs> Brody, what do you think? Uh, the AI is going to blow up. Okay, so we're going to have a fire. Being 100% honest, I don't think there's any ESC on the market that's going to be able to handle this test. Carter, what do you think? Oh I think prop shrapnel is going to go everywhere. Okay. Yeah, that's quite awesome. I think it's cold as <laughs> shit. Let's get it done. Okay. All right, ready? The sand over here. <laughs> Arming. Okay, he stopped it. It still works. All right, try a back arm. You ready? We're gonna go again. We'll try two ESCs. Here we go. Ready? Arming. Wow! Wow! Did you just chop up the Yeah. Oh, yeah. We do. We need a stronger stick. Do we have something? All right, here we go. Arming. I it stopped it. It definitely stopped. It definitely stopped it. Yeah. Yeah. You wow. Could, you can see it definitely stopped it. All right. Let's take it inside. I cannot believe that worked. Oh, right. Let's go inside. Let's go inside. For those a little bit more interested about why this happens and why this is such a difficult test for the ESCs, I'm going to read through some more technical information now from the internet because I am certainly not qualified to speak on it from my own knowledge. I'm also going to put screenshots up now of the full paragraph as I'm gonna skim through it a little bit, but I encourage you all to read through this stuff and learn a little bit more about how brushless motors work because we use them on a daily basis in electric cars, obviously our drones and so many other things and it's fascinating. So hope this is helpful and we're gonna get on to the flight test just after this. So when a brushless motor speed changes rapidly, the back EMF changes very quickly. This rapid change can induce a large voltage in the motor wind. Basically this can induce a very large voltage spike. When a motor motor is running, there's energy stored in its magnetic field in the inductor and mechanical inertia. During a rapid deceleration, this energy needs to go somewhere. Part of the energy will be dissipated in heat, but another part can be returned to the ESC as voltage. All of this is bad. And the reason this is bad, if you exceed the voltage limit of the ESC, then things can go wrong. Obviously, so it says ESCs have components, transistors, capacitors, diodes with specific voltage ratings. And if the back EMF spikes cause the voltage across these components to exceed the ratings, they can break down 
or fail. Going full throttle on an ESC isn't always the most difficult thing for it to do. Really, you hitting a tree branch when going 10 miles an hour, trying to turtle mode after you had a small crash, can be some of the most intense things for your ESC because it's putting so much resistance on the motor. And as you can see by the things we're learning now, that is really hard on an ESC. So when something's free spinning and it has very little resistance when going full throttle or something like that, sure, you're pulling a lot of current, but it's consistent but where you really risk causing damage is when hitting something and sending that back EMF and those voltage spikes back to your ESC. And that may be why sometimes if you have a small crash or what seems like a small crash, you have a problem, you're like, what, I had a small crash and you try to turtle mode for five minutes. That might be why, but just want to give a little bit more information. Let's get on to the flight test to see if this thing still works. Somehow it didn't blow up on the test, but now we need to see if that causes it to desync, if that causes it to have problems when actually flying. So before we end the video, we're gonna try and fly, see if we have any problems because we, as you just saw, ran it to full throttle and stopped the prop forcibly with wooden dowels, conduit, and it didn't blow up somehow. All the motors still spin. It does sound a little bit more rough. So we're gonna see, uh, see if it's still, still kicking. Here we go. You ready? Now we're gonna see if it desyncs. Wow, it's still going. I cannot believe. Wow. I'm in front of us and full on show. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> I can't believe. I cannot believe it still works. Wow, still goes. <laughs> Somehow still work. I continue to be impressed by this thing and further think that AIOs may be the future indeed. This is the Acon one and I have links to it in the description below. Again, I have no affiliation to them. I'm just quite impressed by it and think that AIOs may change how FPV drones are built in the future. They're simple. They continue to show us that they're powerful and can withstand crazy durability tests like we just did. We will continue to update you guys on how it holds up. And uh, if you want to try it out uh, for yourself, then of course, check the link below. And if you have any ideas for how we could kill this thing, let me know. But for all the haters who said that a prop stop would kill it, you were wrong this time. But thanks for watching. We'll see you guys around. Bye.